scenery.
Dad and I will be riding passenger with you. The most boring job in space travel. Yup, I've been his co-pilot since I was old enough to read a map. He lets me fly sometimes, and fix things aboard, and use the intercom and everything. I just have to promise not to complain about having to stay aboard the ship when we're somewhere dangerous. Dad says when I'm older, he'll teach me how to use a pistol, and once I'm a good enough shot, I can go with him anywhere. I can't wait to get older. Aquila's a fun place. Just keep your sidearm at the ready is what Dad always says. It's the best. I met another kid my age who hadn't been on a starship once. Not even once! Same boring old planet for like years. She didn't even know how to replace a phase manifold. Can you imagine? I read. I look around the ship, but no touching. Dad lets me do all sorts of stuff on his ship. But he said I have to be respectful on your ship. But I could try to fix things if you ask. Hint, hint. You can ask. I promise I'll be good. I want to fly my own ship and go all over the place. 
Like you and Dad, really. But hopefully not as crazy as your travels. I thought Dad's were exciting. But yours? Brr. Bye! The star system Cheyenne is what you're looking for. But of course, enjoy. We'll try to keep out of your hair while we're on route. Got some new orders for me? Pew! Sure. Shoot. Better now than I did when we left. I'm sure, it was an adjustment, but... I don't mind so much now. <laughs> you keep the work interesting. <laughs> okay, I have to come clean about something. I can trust you, right? Hopefully you'll still feel that way in a few minutes. Here's the truth. That line I gave you about being a prototype tester for a drip is just my cover story. I actually work for Aegis, the UC's intelligence network. I'm a spy. My last mission was compromised. Mast ordered me to cut ties immediately, get out of New Atlantis, and lay low for a while. That's where you came in. Thanks for understanding, Captain. Lying to a friend always leaves a bad taste in my mouth. I know it's a lot to process. You have the right to some answers if you want them. I'll tell you anything you want to know about my service, unless it's classified. Aegis is the UC's intelligence network. Our primary function is preserving peace in the settled systems without the use of large-scale military force. Agents are scouted from the UC's government's workforce and tasked with different peacekeeping operations, based on their individual talents. They tap me for my sniping skills. My job was eliminating targets that the UC surveillance network identified as potential threats to galaxy-wide peace. Only my mom does. I wasn't supposed to tell anyone, but I couldn't resist letting it slip. She taught me to shoot. I wanted her to know that I was putting her lessons to good use. But the rest of my family only knows my cover story. I told them I had to stay tight-lipped about my work because the experimental tech Drip works on is classified. I can't be too specific. Most of my missions are still classified. But I can tell you that a lot of my targets came from Neon. He just keeps a close eye on the criminal underworld there. Sometimes bad seeds that rise through the ranks in Neon can become a real threat outside the city, too. I don't know if the settled systems would survive another large-scale conflict. I know assassination's a messy way to keep the peace, but sometimes it's the best option. I was tapped by a recruiter during basic training. He saw me doing target practice with my unit and was impressed by my sharpshooting skills. The offer from Aegis was a total surprise. My goal when I enlisted was to join the sniper corps like my mom. I never saw myself doing espionage work, but I'm glad they talked me into it. Covert ops was my calling. If I hadn't been compromised, I would have kept at it until I retired. Nope. When something like this happens, Aegis insists on a clean break. It's safer for the organization and for the agents. The spies are a pretty convincing bunch, especially Agent Plato, the director of Aegis. It only took one conversation with him to convince me to take the offer. I was already committed to serving the UC military, so it felt more like a pivot than a career change. Worked out for me too. I like this job. It's 
tough, knowing I let my family down, though. They think I just abandoned my post at Drip. That isn't how I was raised. I'm sure my dad's disappointed in me. I can't. Aegis business is classified. Most of my family doesn't even know I work there. Telling them what happened would mean betraying the organization. Yeah, it does make me feel better knowing someone understands the truth. I wish I could tell more people, but I'll take what I can get. At the end of the day, I'm alive. And that's more than most compromise agents can say. A bit, but keep it between us. He just doesn't like me sharing details to begin with. Talking about a compromise mission could get me into real trouble. Especially since my target's still out there. My identity was compromised before I could take them out. No, definitely not. I wouldn't have joined your crew if I thought there was a chance it would compromise your safety. Aegis did all kinds of work to make sure my target couldn't find me. As long as I don't make a habit of coming back to New Atlantis, everything should be fine. Well, buckle up. It's an interesting story. So, the reason I'm being especially cagey about this is because that last mission wasn't like my others. I usually dealt with targets in Neon, but this one was a little closer to home. Our surveillance network identified a group of spacers who were plotting a sabotage operation. They were going to use stolen Freestar ships to attack UC convoys. It got worse when we started digging into it. Turns out that the group's leader was a UC government official. I think they were trying to instigate another large-scale conflict between the UC and the Freestar Collective. Their leader was the type of person who had a lot to gain from starting another war. It's not uncommon for groups of spacers or mercs to start getting ideas about taking power or influence away from the major factions. But government officials almost never get caught up in it. At least not as far as I know. Absolutely not. All I can say is that they're a powerful government official with lots of ties to the corporate world and weapons manufacturers. They're the kind of person that would profit from another war. It's the kind of thing we like to get under control as soon as we can. That's where field agents like me come in. I was sent in to infiltrate the group, get close to the leader and assassinate them before any of their operations got off the ground. My cover story was the same as usual, drip weapons tester. I told the group's leader I had a change of heart and wanted to defect from the UC to join their cause. I even brought along blueprints for some of drip's experimental tech to prove how serious I was. They took the bait and let me in. I was undercover for six months before things went south. No way. My family's got lots of close ties to the UC government. The group's leader might have recognized my last name. I use fake identities for most of my missions. The group I infiltrated knew me as Preston Hillcrest. Not for anything functional. Trip designs plenty of duds, too. Comes with the territory of developing experimental weaponry. I had to bite my tongue plenty. But a professional knows how to keep their opinions under wraps. If Aegis had handled things differently, I could have stayed undercover a lot longer. But HQ miscalculated just how far the group was willing to go to keep tabs on its members. The leader was totally paranoid about being found out as a traitor to the UC. They actually hired private security to keep an eye on every member of the group. I was caught out when they followed me to a routine meetup with my contact at HQ. They traced my contact back to Aegis, and that was that. Cover blown. I mean, I'm lucky Aegis figured out what had happened before I had to return to my undercover post. I doubt I'd be standing here if they hadn't. I couldn't tell you. 
I cut off all contact as soon as my cover was blown. But if I had to guess, they put another agent on it right away. And I'm willing to bet they're not going to screw around this time about eliminating the target. They wanted to mitigate the group's ability to make any more connections between Aegis and me. It's also safest for my family that way. If the group managed to track down my real identity, they may try to hurt them to get back at me. <laughs> They'd sure have their work cut out for them if they tried anything on my parents, though. They're still as sharp as they were during the war. Doubt it. When I was undercover, I had to memorize a long list of contingency plans that the group's leader came up with in case the group was compromised. They were pretty serious about disbanding if anyone found out what they were up to. Way too close for comfort. Between you and me, I don't think Aegis treated this mission carefully enough. I tried to warn them about how capable the group was, but I don't think they took me seriously. Luckily, my career is the only thing I lost because of it. It could have been a lot worse. Fine with me. Ask me anything. Anything you want, boss. Well, let's catch up again later. When you have a few moments, there's something I'd like to discuss. a poem I wrote? It's called a haiku. I just read about them. A haiku? Huh? Sounds exciting. Let's hear it. Ever since we talked about the Battle of Cassiopeia, I can't get what happened out of my mind. Space is cold and dark. Starships fly there like... Was it that obvious? Oh, I thought I could handle these memories, but... Until I return to Cassiopeia, I'll never be able to put this to rest. You know how you lose things. I still don't know The last time I saw my crew, their escape shuttle was headed for the planet's surface. I need to find the wreckage to ensure their memories are honored. I would like that. Actually, I need that. One problem, though. Pinpointing the crew's shuttle wreckage is going to be like trying to find a grain of salt in a sandbox. I think we need to start by locating my old campsite on Cassiopeia 1. Shortly after I evacuated, I saw the ship come apart. The UC listed it as lost, so I assume the Dauntless was completely destroyed. The Dauntless took heavy fire to the docking section during the battle. We had three shuttles. One was destroyed, and the other two were damaged. There was no other way off the ship. Was there to tell? I survived. My crew didn't. Still, oh, I'll never forget my finger hovering over that launch button. Would I launch safely, or explode into a fireball? It turned out that my shuttle had just enough power to allow an emergency landing on the planet's surface. I wouldn't call what I did a soft landing, but thank you all the same. My shuttle should have the telemetry tracking data for the other shuttle aboard. It should give us an idea where... it went down. That's if scavengers haven't completely stripped my ship for parts. It has a breathable atmosphere, 
indigenous fauna and maybe a few abandoned mining outposts. Otherwise, it's not populated. Don't worry, it's not as though I'm coming apart at the seams. It's the conversations we've been having. They dredged up these old memories and they're a burden. Hold on. I don't know the exact location of my survival campsite. For that, we are going to have to head to Mast and see if we can get the information from my old friend, Admiral Logan. Your instincts are right on target. Logan and I butted heads more than once during my time with the Navigator Corps. We've never seen eye to eye. Look, I hope this isn't asking too much. Last thing I want to do is drag you into some kind of personal crusade. That's why I'm desperate for your help. Truth is, I'm scared. When I set foot on Cassiopeia, I don't know if I'll be able to handle what I find. If I begin to fall apart, I need someone I can trust to hold me together. Besides bad memories, I don't know. I'm trying not to think about it. Not yet. I know you will. You've always been there when I've needed your help. Why you continue to support me, uh, I'll never understand. I... I don't know what to say. Ah, oh, I've been so busy searching the stars for answers. I've overlooked what's been in front of me all this time. True love. Something I've seriously considered sharing with you for a long time. Just not ready. Not yet. Traveling out here with you, I've discovered that friendships change by circumstance. I worked closely with Aja on long space voyages, so we became friendly. When she quit Constellation, the friendship ended. But I'm certain at this point, even if you and I were separated by a great distance, we'd never lose touch. Yes. Yes, you're absolutely right. Hey, um, anyway, I've taken up enough of your time. I know you have a lot to do. I really appreciate your offer to visit Cassiopeia. Hopefully, it'll bring me the closure that I've needed for far too long. Jump higher than a skyscraper in New Atlantis. Need um, a hand with something. I don't know. Who? Everybody! Skyscrapers can't jump! <laughs> <laughs> 